the Pro Street Alley here at the Street Machine National. This is where the noise is. This is where we're going to find this crazy engine. So I have to come. And it looks good. Been done so well 1947 Chevy pickup yes ma'am and the thing that I love the most what you told me is that all you had to start off with was the front end and the tailgate yeah that's a lot of work yeah, yeah. a lot of customizing to make everything work together it's got an LS out of a C5 Corvette in it it's been modified and we built everything around around that Wow, and um, I'm guessing one of the things that you would have used is the the manual from GM. No. No. So how did you do this? Just blind blindfolded. Uh, I've been working on cars since I was 14, and it's okay. just a lot of a lot of friends and a lot of uh, YouTube videos watching and how this works with this and what's what's that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so. That is amazing that you've done this without a book, but you know cars. Yeah. You know where all the parts go, so yeah. you definitely not. It's not your first time. I'm no. guessing you've restored some no. others. Yes, I've had a '90 Mustang, a '66 Mustang, and then a bunch of other little hot rods and everything. But like I said, with friends like all these guys that hang out down here on Pro Street Alley, we have a question. We get online and talk to each other. I mean, if they can't answer it, somebody else will help you. And it's like I said. It's not just everybody thinks one person does it and it's not it's a bunch of people that helps you do it because like i said even their information or them like hey you can do it or whatever you're having a bad day and somebody comes over and helps you do something that you can't get done i mean and that's the car culture yeah for you. that's all about the that's cars the car culture. and the cruise is happening behind us which is why that fabulous sound is in the background but we're enjoying it yes we are we love it You've got a fair few customizations done to these. What is one of the biggest customs that you've done? Uh, well, uh, the frame and everything, like I said, it's all it's, been, it's a tubbed out Pro Street, narrow rear end. It's uh, lowered. We, uh, all the brakes set up and everything is all up underneath the dash. Everything's been, and just little, little touches here, a little bit there. I, so, you make it your own. You make it your own. And how long have you been coming to the Street Machine Nationals? I've been coming here off and on since 89. Wow, okay. And I love it. My first time, but I'm going to be coming back again, that's for sure. You're welcome. Man. It's, lots, it's lots of fun. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ryan. Right. Very cool. I do like my Holden car. All right, Pro Street Alley, everybody here. And of course, I have to meet fellow Aussie 
Greg, also known as Beach. He's got the Holden Ute here again, amongst more friends, and look what I'm getting. Love it, absolutely awesome. Remind us again, Greg, um, what do you do? What is Pro Street Restoration? Uh, restore and modify American cars mainly. And you do that here or in Australia? Yeah, back in Australia. Back in Australia. And how long have you been coming to the Street Machine Nationals? This is my eighth time here. Eighth time. Yeah, 2014 or 2015? 2015. Now you're working on some cars. You've yes. got some bit of land back home. Yes. What are you working on at the moment? Oh, plenty. There's plenty. like 30 or something we're working on. Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about your personal cars. Oh, my own? Your own. Um, uh, my 66 Falcon, uh, my 70 Cuda, uh, a little tea bucket, a couple of Harleys. Uh, and yeah, there's like another 20 or something to play with when I find time. And are you going to turn all of those into Pro Street as well? Not all of them. No. Not all of no. them. No, the Falcon's definitely Pro Street. It, it'll be, should have been here this year, but ran out of time. Okay. But it'll be one of the, like these mental cars that I can't register in Australia anymore. No, you can't. So I'll bring it over here and register it and I can drive it anyway. And then you can leave it here as well? Yeah, it'll stay here. Yeah. 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 It'll Gotta stay love here America. I'll come over and drive it when I come over. Yeah. And you yeah. can still enjoy it. Yep, I can drive it. Yeah, I can, well, the plan was to drive uh, uh, LA to Chicago Route 66. Oh yeah. But I can't because I doubt I can keep methanol up to it. So it'll be, uh, it'll probably come over this side and stay here and stay within Illinois, so I can drive to all different places. Well, that's so cool, and it's so good that you're able to do that. Well, it's good, yeah. Yeah. Put, yeah, in, yeah. put in a big steel box and say, ship it. That's put a, it. Put ship a few it. stamps on it, lick a few, a few, <laughs> few thousand. And, and <laughs> yep, it's going to cost, but it's worth it. Yeah. Because well, this cost me enough to bring over. But you live this here now. Yeah, this has been here six years now. There you go. Yeah, because yeah, when I, I first I'm, met you, you I, had it. I just did, I've done 40,000 k's in America in it. Okay. It just clicked over 40,000. See, we, we call it a ute, ute, but you guys would call it a mini truck. Oh, well, it's a pickup or a mini truck. A pickup or a mini truck. Yeah, I but guess. it's a Ute. But we, it's a Ute See, back and home. It's, and it's an Oz Ute. That's why it has Oz Ute number plates. Oz Ute. There you go. Pro Street Restorations. Super cool. Always good to see you, mate. Yep. Thanks for the shirt. No problem. All right, Sean. Your car stopped me as I was walking by before. One of the first things that stopped me is the dots on the pinstriping that's happening. Yes. But before that, tell us what have you got, mate? This is a 65 Malibu Pro Street tube chassis. Got a small block blower, uh, Rocky Robertson paint, Boyd wheels, custom interior. And this is pretty new to you. Yeah, I actually just acquired it in February. And what is it about the Pro Street cars that you like? Is this the first one you've had? No, or? I've had many. You've uh, had many. I don't know what it is. I just always loved them since I was a kid. So. It must be the noise. It's the noise. It's the noise, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, I love what they've done here because things that draw me is things that are different. The bubbles are different. The bubbles are different. It's, it's whatever makes a car stand right out. <laughs> now let's have a look. Newer like interior. I drive it quite a bit. So this is going to be your driver? Yeah, I've actually drove it to the grocery store twice and Walmart a few times. I drive it quite a bit. So. Like your friend and me, for us Aussies, it's just fascinating and amazing that you're able to get this on the street. Yeah. And drive I, it and it's street legal. Street legal. And you said it's a small block, but it still it, makes some noise. It is a small block and it makes a little noise. Let's see how much noise it really makes. You want to? Let's turn it on. Again, I'm here because of the freedom, everybody. So we're very thankful for the stuff that you guys can do and the freedom that you have. It's not everywhere the same. That's what we want to hear. Love it. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. The 
El Caminos are always striking everybody. And then when they're sitting like this with this kind of a block, definitely, as the number plate says, oh, yes. <laughs> Very cool. Definitely want to have a chat with Yona. There is a fair bit of music happening from those speakers, so I'm going to try my best to get a little bit more information and find out exactly what block that is. All right, Fred. Awesome El Camino. Love the number plate. Thank How you. long have you had it? I bought it in '88. In '88. Yes. Okay, that's been a while. Huh? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. And you've done some modifications to this? Yeah, it's, I made it. I took it all back to original. Okay. The way it came from the factory. Just kidding. No, you did not. <laughs> no, you did not. You know, we've people would love to pull my leg, but... We, we framed, reframed the rear end and did the motor, put a blower motor in it last year. What motor is that? That's 454 board. Nothing huge, nothing big, but just reliable and good on parts. 1988. How did you come across this? My brother seen it sitting at a body shop out in the parking lot for sale. That and was he called me and he goes, you got to go down and look at this. They didn't want nothing for it, and that's still the paint job from back then. Wow. That was painted in 84, I believe. Wow. So I went down there and looked at it, and it's like, we did the deal. And you love it so much. You've kept it all these years. Yes. Knowing the fact it's just going to appreciate more. Of course, it's a classic. Never yeah. goes out of style. Yeah, hopefully. I don't think it will. <laughs> you either like El Caminos or you hate them. I don't know. I like them. <laughs> well, thank you. I like them. How, how, what is there not to like? I mean, if you like a pickup, you know, you still get the bed. Yep. Yet again, people are always trying to slam their trucks these days and bring them lower to the ground. Correct. Get an El Camino and it's all already down, so. Yep. The only thing I don't do is I move people. I will not do that. You don't move people? No. No? No furniture in the back. <laughs> well, you can't because you've got a fair few things in there. <laughs> Let's have a look, see what's in the back here. Well, there's literally no room. So it's just a basic undercoat or a coated bed. After we did all the sheet metal shit to it. And Love it. And I know you. Um, some people might be commenting, you know, well, if people are doing that with their trucks, Rana, why didn't you get an El Camino? I still like my trucks, even though I can appreciate an El Camino. Awesome. <laughs> yep. But this is awesome. How long have you been coming to the Street Machine Nationals? Uh, I started back when it was in Springfield, Illinois. So that would have been probably, my first one was 81 or 82. Wow. Okay, and, and you love it, this. Then it went here and for a little bit, and then it went to East St. Louis. I didn't go there, and then it went up north. I didn't go there. When it came back here, I do was you know? Right back. Do you know why it changed location so many times? That I don't know. It's interesting. It must be a legality part. I don't know. Maybe. It, it used to be a little wilder back then okay. than it is now. I okay. think everybody was wild and crazy, uh, got a little older, and have walkers, and they just can't do it anymore. That's awesome, Fred. I appreciate this. Thank you so much. All right. And hey, before before we go, John Stewart's look-alike. Nice, I've been called many of things. Out. Some star with an A and an E, an e but uh, yeah, John Stewart. <laughs> that started it. down here. I believe it. You know, I just have to see his picture once again, and I can definitely see the resemblance. I can tell you whose water or wallet's fatter. It ain't mine. <laughs> well, be John you, you definitely fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Peace. And this one here, you guys, I don't know if I had this Rob's um, Pro Street here in Parlor on the um, Turkey, Daytona Turkey Rod Run. This is absolutely beautiful. I had such a great time there with um, Rick Diaz and the Pro Street Brotherhood there they had. We did the cruise. So I'm seeing um, some of the people from that show over here. And one of them here is Rob Johnson. We're gonna look at that some parlor again because I remember filming it, but I don't think I got up close. And Laurie is here as well, so she was super cool and she's really inspired me to work on my track because she's worked on her own um, Mustang. Now this is Rob's son Jordan and he's getting into this and now he's building uh, Pro Street cars as well. So let's have a chat with him and find out exactly what he's done and then I want to find out more about Rob's Impala. Yeah, 
body lying down. Jordan, come over here, please. Now, I saw your dad at the turkey run. Yeah. But now you've gotten into this as well. Yeah, he's kind of a bad influence. <laughs> I wouldn't say that at all. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been um, working on pro street cars and when did the spark start for you? Well, when he was my age, he had a 67 and Powell also. That was okay. his first car. So I always saw pictures of his and liked them. So we brought, he had this car sitting at home. So we started building it and finished it up in 2017 and then did power tour two weeks after we finished it. So in 2017, what did it look like? <laughs> rough rough yeah I had to put quarter panels on it doors wow okay it just it hadn't been touched or restored it nope. was all yep. original yep. And... okay wow well it looks fabulous now thank you great color choice goes so well with the chrome and the wheels and of course pro street what's happening under the hood uh it's just a 502 crate motor gm crate motor you have so much room under here you, and you can do so much more i can any plans? No, this one's about done. This one's done. And how much horsepower does this have? Right around 500. Nice. 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 Yeah. So did you work on this yourself as well? Yep. Yep. Dad and I built both of these cars. And now the real question is, you've got the bug. Yeah. What's the eye or your mind on your next car? Or I started... I've started building a 64 Chevelle Pro Street car, blower car. So it's six liter LS, 1071. Nice. Just something to cruise around and something I can have air conditioning in. This doesn't have air conditioning? No. It looks like it would have. It gets hot. It gets black hot. on black, it's miserable. Yes, yes. So I need air conditioning. The interiors are done really well. That's why I assumed that it would have a little modern upgrade in it. But you have kept it vintage to a degree as well. Yeah. The dash there, that's all um, 67. Yep, that's all original, yeah. Yep. Wow, very cool. Thank you. Will we see you at Daytona this year? I'm hoping. Uh, the car probably won't be there, but I should be there. And we know that Rob's going to be there. Yep. Yeah, I'll hitch a ride with him or something. You'll hitch a ride with him, and why not? I mean, look what he's driving, exactly. for goodness sakes. Let's have a look at Rob's car in detail, everybody, because I don't think I got a chance to do that. But hey, I appreciate this, Jordan. And thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Rob. I saw this, and I remember seeing it, and I even remember hearing it at the Daytona Turkey Run 67 Impala. Yes. Come over here. And now before, as you were driving by, I was like, yes, I know that car. And I thought to myself, I don't know too much else about it because we never got a chance to chat. No, we didn't. You were avoiding me. <laughs> <laughs> You're done now. <laughs> no, no, you got me now. I got you now. So tell us, um, 67 Impala, how long have you had it for? Uh, I think the first show we took it to was in 2017. Okay. Uh, it was just in black primer. Um, I think we got it early 2016. Um, got it painted right before this show in 2018. Okay. We were actually putting it back together the morning of the show. <laughs> to bring it to the street yeah. nationals? And, okay. And the, the paint was still almost wet. The paint was still wet? Yeah, you could smell the solvents coming out of the paint still. <laughs> wow, and were you looking for a 67 Impala? Uh, I've actually had one my whole life. Your whole uh, life? Tell my, me about my that. My dad bought a 67 Impala Super Sport uh, a year before I was born, because I was born in 68. Okay. And I ended up with it, and me and my dad redid it uh, when I was in high school. Wow. And when I was a senior in high school, I wrapped it around the telephone board. <laughs> but I went out and bought another one right away. Of course. And uh, that's the one I ended up painting black and sold in and 1998. Now... So my son wanted one just like mine. And now he's got it. And I saw the picture of Jordan's black one, which is um, interviewed him but also your black 67 yeah. Impala and they're absolutely identical yeah so he's got dad's car back yeah and, pretty much and how happy are you about that oh I love it <laughs> following in my footsteps following in your footsteps and the 67 Impala has not left you no this is beautiful yeah. I love the color on this this is definitely not black what gray would you call this uh it's more of a shotgun gray shotgun okay 
now. I remember the lights, but yep. you know what I didn't notice? The print. Is that that's, is that carbon fiber? Uh, it's actually hydro dipped. Hydro dipped. Okay. Now tell me about hydro dipped. How different is that? Uh, they take a film and put it on top of the water, and then they take the part and dip it down in the film. To get that print. Yeah, and the film sticks to the part, and when you pull it out, you've got it. You've got the carbon fiber look. Now, this compared to doing a wrap, what's yeah. the difference? Uh, what's better? What's longer? More expensive? Um, wraps. I don't know. I've never done a wrap on a car. Okay. Uh, they usually just do the bodies. They don't really wrap the engine components. So something with more finer details. Yeah. The hydro dip holds up better to do. Because the wrap is a vinyl. Of course. Of course. Okay. But it looks beautiful. You've got it complete with the lights. Now tell me about the tape here. <laughs> What's about, going on? About the what? About this right here. Oh, that's uh, A71 supercharger. And what block is that sitting on top of? Uh, 496, big 496. block Chevy. And is that a 671 blower? It's an 871. 871. Yeah. Wow, that is a big block. The car is a is a full tube chassis and it's on airbags so I can make it sit low. We're gonna have to see it in action because I did not film you when you were driving by properly, but I do wanna see this in action. Let's have a look at the interiors first. There's a lot of cables happening inside here. Yeah, I need to completely rewire the car, but once I got it running to where I could drive it, I started driving it. And then you don't need to. I haven't quit long enough to now, Rob, I'm fix all my wiring. That, that does not sound very safe. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> haven't had any problem in uh, five years, so. Okay. And how much horsepower does that whole engine setup have now that you've modified it? Uh, 850 to 900 horsepower. Wow. That's and I don't lot. race it, I just drive it on the street. You Have don't fun. need to because you just drive it and everybody would be looking, especially yeah. with that sound. Yeah. Alright Rob, let's see the let's see the airbags in action and let's hear this motor. You guys wanna see this because it looks absolutely beautiful. The impala, honestly, the body lines and the way it just sits, it's very rectangular. So when it comes to pro street cars, these are my favorites. and it's a long bed we have been seeing so many short beds and they look great they look so sporty but every time I see a long bed I'm drawn to it I want to find out more and they stand out love the two tones here
We're going to have a chat with Roger and get a bit of backstory to this because he's had this for a long time and there's a lot of family memories here. Roger, how are you today? Good, and you? I'm good. So you have a beautiful truck. Thank you. It is absolutely immaculate and I love what you've got in the engine. Why don't we start off over there? That's going to catch anybody's attention. I tried. It's, I want to build something different. It's a 65 F100 powered by a 565 big block Chevrolet, an 871 BDS blower with Joe Blow fuel injection hidden up under the hat. You don't see any of the wiring or injectors. It's all encased underneath here. Um, Italy big and ugly and the Joe Blow Raptor plate and street driven on a regular basis. And how long have you had the blower on this? Um, about 2019. This is the second blower I put on. I did the uh, the blower shop first and put the uh, tunnel ram intake on this thing about two years ago and swapped the blower with the new BDS 871. So, BDS 871? Yes. You don't see the big blowers on trucks that often? No, you don't. But there are a few. They're coming around. Um, and when I do, they're short beds. Like I said, I, I love the fact short. this is a long bed. You don't see many of them. Um, I've seen the blowers on a few of the Chevy trucks, but I haven't seen one on an F100. So this is super yeah. cool. And the fact that it's a long bed. I, I built it because it was my dad's and I wanted to do something different. Um, it's not a Camaro, it's not a Chevelle, it's not a Mustang. I love all those, but I wanted to do something different. And this just screamed, let's go. <laughs> so, um, You've done it well. I took, thank you. I took the frame off and it was a 10-year build. Uh, the original colors, it's not the original paint, I recolored it or repainted it. Uh, all leather interior, full roll cage. The bed tilts on it, on actuators, and comes up about two, three feet in the back so I can get the wheels and tires off. Oh, okay. Um, Reback And that's with um, hydraulics? Electric actuators. Electric actuators, mm -hmm. okay, interesting. Um, I've added a wing to the back of it, the parachute, um, custom fuel cell up underneath, like I said, it's all. Any all reinforcements that you would need to help you slow down that motor, sir? Yes. <laughs> all leather interior, full roll cage. Switch on, fuel on, and hold on. Definitely, in that order. In that order. How fast would this go? I haven't raced it yet. Um, it's a lot of fun. It'll bust the tires and sit 40 and 50, I know that. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, we have a blast with it. Um, I bet you it turns do. Turns a lot of head. I just thought that I wanted to build something different. And um, that was my desire when I put it together. It's something that would stand out. So I love the fact that it's a long bit, because you don't see many of them. I love the colors of it. And the motor just kind of put it over the top. It really does. Yeah, like the, now, you didn't restore this just once, but twice. Yes, twice. Tell me about that. Well, I, when I started on it in 97, I tore it down to the frame. Um, I back halved it, but it wouldn't set this low. I, didn't, I left the original front end, okay. and I built a 468 Chevy for it. Conventional headed motor with the... Um, uh, 1050 Dominator, so naturally aspirated. Drove it for two and a half years, had a black, it ran real well. Carried to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee to hurt the motor in it two and a half years later. Brought it home, and little did I know that I would tear it apart again. Basically, take the body off the frame, re back half it, and build the doghouse here so the back end sits so much lower. And I finally did the front end the way I should have when I started. I put you a, called this the doghouse? Yeah, I built yeah, the hut, the hatch. Okay. To, uh, like I said, I cut the floor because it didn't. I did that so I could squat the back end a little lower. Sure. Is this on airbags? No, it's not. It's not. Uh, up on the front end, it's got a, a Mustang II front end from Fat Man. I finally, I should have done that up front, and then I didn't. So this time around, back in between 20, 2009 and 2019, it was down again for 10 years. I redid the front, redid the back. I'd already hurt the motor. I said, you know, let's do something different. I wanted some wow factor. We talked about twin turbos. I'd already done a blower car back in the early 80s, and I said, you know what, let's just, let's just put a blower on this thing and, nice. and go um, supercharge again. But I didn't want to use carburetors. I wanted to do Fuel injection. E EFI, and I wanted to hide everything I could. If you look up here, you see a lot of these hats, but everybody's got them on top of two carburetors. Yes, I have noticed. You'll, you'll see a lot of these with fuel rails here and, and four injectors per side. My injectors are hidden under this hat where you can't see them. Here's all of my wiring for my injectors. There's, this is the throttle position sensor. This is supposed to be a metering block and fuel line. This has got three tiny wires in it. It's made to look like fuel, although it houses the wiring. So I tried to hide all the wiring so that it looks mechanical, although it's EFI. It's just run off a Holly HP computer. That's how I tune it. But I wanted it to look like it was mechanical, like a, like a full-on drag race setup. 
So actually, that's why it's stained, and it looks good because it looks it. a lot more cleaner. That's right, uh, neat and tidy is what yeah. I'm shooting for here. I found a set of valve covers which are very, very rare to find. These are called Larsons from the early 80s. They're very, very pricey, hard to come by. Uh, they're two piece valve because, covers. Because um, they match the vintage color you've got yes. on the truck. I, I've stuck did that. you paint that or? Yes. And I did that because if I just do all the aluminum, it just runs together. So yes. I try to highlight the little areas I can you know, with some green paint to break it up. So all the aluminum, polished aluminum doesn't run together. I street drive it a lot on the weekends uh, where nice. I'm at from Fort Worth, Texas. And what is this spot here? That's the evac canister. Okay. This is a uh, fuel filter. Um, got a real fine um, filter in it so that you can see any metal shavings in the motor. Provided you get out of it and you think you hear something. But this should save you thousands of dollars if it's working well. And you've done all of this yourself. Yes. Which is big. The interiors, the mechanics. Um, obviously through dad is that how you learned how to build on yeah, cars? Yeah I was or? helping him at a young age and um, um, I guess it was at 19 at, when I took my first car and tore it apart and built a blower motor for it. My dad, my dad really perked up. Like I said he, he was a good mechanic I learned from him and, and our interest peaked and came together when I built that first car wow. and, and I guess maybe he saw something maybe he'd done something right. Yeah. You know I was out late at night every weekend until two or three in the morning. I wasn't drinking, I wasn't smoking. We were drag racing on the streets. Yeah. But we didn't get in trouble. Yeah. Other than the cops said you can't do this here, so we'd go find another place. But <laughs> uh, I grew up a good kid with my dad being kind of strict. Um, learned the mechanics from him. But look, so when I built that first car, he jumped right in with me and helped. And um, I said this was his only truck he ever owned. It was beautiful when I tore it apart. And to this day, he'd either love me for it or he'd kick me square in the butt. I don't know well, which. I think he'll be very proud of you because. <laughs> You're keeping it alive. I've got You're a son. You're modernizing it to keep it going for the next few generations. I'm and, uh, sure he would love I just, it. I, I, can't, I couldn't let it go for any amount of money. No. It, it, it just got way too many fond memories. Well, uh, you told me that you grew up. That's what I love about these stories. You grew up sitting here looking through this window. Yeah, we had a camper here. My dad made us a bed. And we would throw our luggage underneath. And with us four kids pulling the camper would tap on this glass. Hey. We need to go to the bathroom. My mother had a road atlas and she said, it looks like another 60 miles. <laughs> You're going to have to right. wait. But I'll, I'll always, always have more miles riding back here. I don't have a thousand miles in this seat yet. No. In the 10 years I've owned it. Um, I got a few pictures of it over here in its early, its early days. Let's have a look. Um, I've added the wing and the parachute and some airbrush work back here. Very cool. Uh, pro farm plates. I've always held a little hay bale everywhere I go since 07. I call it my farm truck. You've had that since you were seven years old? No, oh. so, uh, the truck debuted in 07, so I've, 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 been hauling hay, I've been hauling hay since 07. I would Here's, have been taking a picture with that hay little haystack if I had known There's that. what the truck looked like. And there's Let's the camper that we rode in. Owner built, love the owner builds. And here's the picture of what I took it down to, to your left there. That's a fine camper, it, it is pretty big as well. Yeah. And you brought it down to the frame. Yes, that's right. That's, and then this is me in front of it, probably in 66. Wow. Me and my brothers and sisters at the lake fishing. That's what it looked like with that camper on it again. Wow, He bought it new in 65. And uh, like I said, I'm just going to keep it in the family. I am so happy for you. I, I just, I love it. We And we've, you know, the, the vehicles are neat, but I've made so many new friends because of this. We, we take it all over the country. I've had East Coast, West Coast, and there's just so many people out there that, have the same interest and bond that we become friends with and i hold it we don't have anything like this in texas so i bring it up here all my guys from uh, friends from the east coast come up i take it to outer banks north carolina once every year um ocean city new jersey and it's just if i didn't take this i'd still go because yeah. i've got so many friends and this is our get together this is a, it's a week for me a week's vacation and it's just so much fun hanging out with everybody not only does your track look absolutely killer it's got a long bed it's got an awesome blow at the front but it's the truck that you grew up in. It's your dad's memories. Doesn't get better than that. I can't everybody. get rid of it. I'll, I'll take it to my grave. Oh, it means so much to me. Um, I, I love everything about it. Just I just wanted to do something different. And I believe I accomplished that. Good for you, sir. Thank you. Good for you. Thank you so much.